Today is the last day of general election campaigning before people head to the polls tomorrow. Let's take a look at the seats to watch across the nation. Uxbridge and Royslip South. Boris Johnson's own seat is likely to be a safe one, but he does hold the smallest majority for a Prime Minister since 1924. It's unlikely, but it would prove the most spectacular upset of the election if it were to go against him. Escher and Walton. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab had a 23,000 majority at the last election, seemingly making him look safe. However, a backlash in the handling of the Harry Dunn case has seen a push against him locally, while his hardline stance on Brexit could also go against him to make him a high-profile loser on the night. North East Somerset. Usually a Tory safe seat, leader of the House of Commons, Jacob Rees-Mogg won a majority here by 18.9% at the last election. However, He's had a tumultuous campaign with comments he made on Grenfell receiving widespread condemnation, seeing him take a step back from the spotlight which he often finds himself in. That, teamed with tactical voting, could see a flip in this seat, but it looks unlikely. Bolsover. Dennis Skinner, or the Beast of Bolsover as he's often known, is an institution that could soon be a thing of the past in the Commons. He's been a Labour MP for Bolsover since 1970, but he could lose his seat with the Tories targeting Labour leave seats. Canterbury. Up until 2015, Canterbury had been a Tory seat for more than a century, but then Rosie Duffield pinched it from the Conservatives with a majority of 185. She herself has admitted this year it's on a knife edge, and although she's a pro-Remain MP, she may face some of her votes being taken by the Lib Dems. North East Fife. So when it comes to marginal, North East Vice was by far the closest to call, with a majority of just two the SNP won it last time, with the Lib Dems coming in a close second. There was a healthy Tory vote as well, so with such a slim majority, the seat could easily change. Workington. It's a Labour seat, but Workington, the birthplace of the so-called Workington man, is a target for the Tories. The constituency was 61% in favour of leave, so the Tories will be hopeful to get their pledge of get it done to play well there. Kensington. Labour won this in 2017, but with a majority of only 20. This year, all three of the major parties will be vying for the seat, and think they're in with a chance to win it. Former Tory minister turned Lib Dem hopeful Sam Gima is standing, with the party hoping its pro-Remain stance could win over the crowd. Crew and Nantwich. There's a trend in some of these marginal seats of a slight Labour majority teamed with a heavy Leave Brexit backing. Crew and Nantwich is one of those. Labour won with a 48 majority, but the Brexit vote was 60% Leave. The Tories could hope that that will swing it their way. Hastings and Rye. This seat was won by former Tory Amber Rudd in 2017 with a slim majority of 346. However, she's since quit the party and has announced she will not stand as an independent this time out. That opens the door wide open to Labour, who held the seat from 1997 to 2010.